And if you're like me, you're maybe thinking about what art goals you want to try to accomplish this year. And um, that's definitely something that I've thought about myself. So today we're going to talk about some of the best tips that I have for creating art goals and thinking about how to make those goals work for you, how to make sure that you accomplish the goals that you're setting, uh, what to do if you run into any snags, and uh, how to make sure that you're successful and that you grow and enjoy your artistic journey. Um, one of the things that uh, helps me, I think, come to this conclusion is a couple of years ago, as you may have seen on my YouTube channel, I actually uh, was able to set an art goal to do art every single day. And uh, we'll maybe talk about that more a little bit later. But um, I was able to keep that goal going for um, about two years um, when a, a terrible freak accident on a holiday uh, made me miss a day. But I did every single day for two years. I missed a day and then I reset and uh, I actually kept going again for uh, a number of years. Um, so lately what has happened is I kind of decided to step away from that daily routine, that daily ritual. Um, and I felt like I wanted a break and I've been doing a lot more commissions and things like that. And so I kind of took a break and um, felt that artwork wasn't as enjoyable and it, it was a struggle for me. And so in the new year, um, I was really disappointed in my lack of creativity, my lack of art, art making. And so I've set a goal to get back into that routine again and to do art every single day. So uh, right now I'm actually gonna jump into making some artwork uh, for you guys while we chat. And uh, if you have any questions or comments for me while we're having this discussion, since this is a YouTube live, you can uh, ask your question live right now. And if you're watching this later, leave your question down in the comment and I'll get back to you. We'll uh, continue the discussion, not just for you, but to help anybody who watches this video later, who's looking for tips or inspiration on how to set good art goals and how to accomplish them. So today I'm gonna to be sketching this photo I took of my dog, Harry, and uh, I just kind of like his expression and I like the gesture and things. So we'll be drawing that in my sketchbook here. Um, just gonna be doing something in pencil today. So one of the things that um, I've been thinking a lot about as I wanted to create some of my my goals was to really think about the reason why. Um, it's very easy for us to feel like we have to do something because maybe somebody else suggests it or um, because we see other people doing that. And um, I think really before you get too far down the road with uh, setting our goals, you have to think about why? Why do you want to set the goals that you're you're maybe thinking of, especially if you kind of have an idea set in mind already? Um, you know, for me, the goal this year and in the years past has been to do art every single day. And uh, I'll probably talk about that a little bit later, too, why I like things like that that have a certain tempo or frequency to them. But it's really important for you to figure out why you want to set the goals that you're setting, because um, depending on what you're trying to get out of the experience and get out of the goal in of itself um, is going to kind of determine how you approach the situation in the first place. So let's say, you know, really I break down things into two types of goals. There are going to be goals that are quite rigorous, and then there are going to be goals that are less rigorous or easy. And, uh, you know, neither one is better than the other. It kind of just depends on, on what you're trying to do. So let's say, let's, let me give an example of uh, a rigorous goal. And that would be if you said you wanted to master animal portraiture <laughs> uh, in a year and become, you know, like a professional animal portrait artist. So, uh, you know, you, if that's your goal, then you might set out to to think about okay, well, what will that what will it take to uh, to accomplish that? And maybe you would say, well, I need to, you know, be really good at 
the features. And, you know, you'd maybe think like, uh, maybe I need to, to be able to do several types of, of animals. So not just maybe dogs, but horses too. So you might come up with a program for yourself that's quite rigorous in that um, I want to uh, be rock solid on the anatomy. Um, I want to be doing all of these things from life. Uh, maybe, you know, a certain portion of the week or a certain part of your practice is going to require you to, to uh, you know, use live animals or, or go to the zoo or things of that nature. So you're going to be thinking about some of those things and uh, and maybe set yourself a, a program. Okay, I need to do uh, so much drawing and so much painting from life and I need to do so much research and maybe I want to take a class at a community college or veterinary class. I mean, there's so many different things that you could go. Maybe you want to take lessons. You could really build it out in, into quite a difficult and rigorous program. And that's neither good nor bad. But depending on what your goal is and what you're and what you're wanting to accomplish, on the other hand, maybe you're saying, "Well, I like drawing animals. I I, I like doing it, but I don't know how much I want to do it. I, I don't want to be a professional. I just kind of want to try it. Um, I enjoy it every time I every time I sit down to do art. I really enjoy what I'm doing. So maybe you would want to specifically make sure that you're not doing something that's uh, as rigorous because. Uh, that might actually sap out all of the joy for you. So, you know, thinking about, okay, you know, there's a bunch of things I might try, but let's see where it goes. So maybe, you know, your goal is just going to be to do something easier and more fun, to keep it fun and not to uh, let it get too out of control in terms of like the requirements on your time and your energy. So think about why the goals you're setting, what is it that you want to get out of it, what's important for you. And that will help you kind of dictate your plans on um, if you want something that's more rigorous or something that's more easy. Once you do that, then you do need to sit down and kind of define the goals for yourself. Um, something You want something that is measurable, uh, something that you can, you know, at the end of the year, you can know if you did it or not. Um, so you want to avoid things like saying, <clears throat> like I gave an example, master uh, portrait artist, you know, of uh, animals, animal portraiture or human portraiture. Because how will you know if you've mastered it? You know, you could probably interview Leonardo da Vinci. And uh, actually, one of my favorite quotes by him is, um, oh, yeah, also, I can paint. He was trying to get a job. And uh, he he just kind of writes as like an aside. And, and also, I can paint. Um, you know, this is a man who has basically one of the most famous paintings of all time, the Mona Lisa, several of them. I think his painting is uh, the highest selling painting of all time as well. But he really was kind of insecure about his painting skills. So um, how do you know if you've mastered or not? That's really difficult. But maybe you want to say, well, I want to be able to paint a portrait of a dog um, I want to be able to do a landscape painting. Uh, I want to I want to learn how to paint in oils this year. I want to uh, try to paint bigger. Um, I want to carry a sketchbook around with me. Uh, my my buddy on here, Tez Dower, he uh, did a plein air painting almost every week last year, uh, which I was like totally blown away by, and uh, I'm so proud of what he's done for um, the plein air community and. Also, just himself. I mean, he's an incredible artist, and it's been so cool to uh, to see him grow over the years. And um, he's definitely one of my favorite plein air painters on here, and just an awesome guy. So it's so cool to uh, to see that, and uh, to see how he you know accomplished that goal, and uh, and did something like that. So that's something also that you could do as well. Um, but you want to you wanna define the goal so that it's something that you can measure it. One of my students, one of my music students, recently told me that he wants to try to write a song um, every week this year. So that's going to be 52 songs. And so uh, we talked about how um, that, you know, what is that? How do you define that? 
what constitutes a song. How will he know if he's accomplished that? And um, what is a week? Things like that. When does the week end? If he misses a day, what can he do? So those are the sorts of things that once you define your goal, uh, you want to set some ground rules for yourself. So if you say, like Tez, you're going to do a plein air painting every week, then you probably want to set some ground rules. Well, what happens if... Um, what happens if I miss a week? Can I make it up later? Uh, can I do two plein air paintings the next week? Or am I just stuck? Right? You want to you figure out what happens in the case of that contingency. You also want to maybe define for yourself, do I have to finish the painting? Or do I just need to start the painting? Um, those would be things that are important to kind of figure out. Also, um, how uh, are you going to, you know, if you're going to do a plein air painting every week, what kind of, uh, what kind of uh, paintings are you going to do? Is it going to be oil painting? Are you going to oil paint every time? Um, does it matter? Are you going to delineate that? Does, what, does urban sketching count? Things of that nature you want to decide for yourself. Uh, and, you know, you can kind of make that up, but you need to figure that out for yourself as to uh, what are the ground rules for yourself. Um, a lot of times, I, I think if you have like a week-long goal, you need to delineate when does the week start and when does the week end. Um, so my, my student who was saying he's going to write a song every week, I said, well, when does the week end? He said, you know, Sunday. I said, okay, so if it's Saturday night, you haven't write, written a song yet. What happens, uh, you know, if it's midnight? Do you have to have the song written by midnight, or can you go past midnight? And you know, and we kind of discussed it. And he said, "Well, no. If it's like one or two uh, in the morning, you know, but I'm still basically awake from Saturday, then uh, it still counts as Saturday." And I said, "Cool. I mean, I like that. I think that makes sense to me." But you have to decide what works for you. When I asked him, "Okay, if you miss uh, miss a week," Uh, do you want to be able to, you know, make it up and do um, two two songs next week, two paintings next week, whatever? And he said, no, because I know I'll take advantage of that. Uh, then I'll say, well, what, if I can do two, why not do three? If I can do three, why not do four? And so for him, it's more important to say, um, no, I, I have to do it this week. It's, it's do or die. Um, but for somebody else, it might be wise to say, okay, I get a couple uh, mulligans and... Um, you know, there's going to be, you need to decide what you're going to do for, for holidays or what happens if you get sick. You want to think about those contingencies and that will that will help you um, because those things are going to happen. And so it'll help you to, uh, to think about that and to have a plan set in place for when you get sick, for when you burn out, for when you're tired, or for when you forget. One of the things that I think happens a lot is uh, we do forget or uh, life gets in the way. Other uh, obligations or unforeseen events can uh, take precedent. And uh, if you're like me and, um, you know, you're, you're starting fresh, starting anew, uh, it's very easy to just fall back on, on your old patterns. Um, and one of the things that you want to do to to make sure that you get your uh, your artwork done is whatever your art goals are is to schedule it um a lot of us live by live and die by schedules and uh we have obligations that we know we have to keep and for the most part you know if you think about the things that you put on your schedule you pretty much mostly keep them um work could be school could be meeting a friend, or uh, some something like that of that nature, and um, so you want to treat with respect your goal and the things that you're you're trying to accomplish, because essentially by calling it a goal, by saying this is something that I want to accomplish, um, it is something that's important to you, and so you need to treat it with the same sort of respect that you would treat any other thing that is on your on your calendar. 
the other thing is like by putting it on your calendar, you're so much less likely to forget or um, to just put it off. And so that uh, I think is the number one thing that can help help with that. Another thing uh, along with that is if you can, scheduling it earlier in your day is better than later. So I had made this goal this year that I want to make art every single day for uh, 2024. And um, I, you know, I had to do something on January 1st, January 2nd, January 3rd, January 4th, January 5th. And I didn't know what I was going to do on January 5th. And I, I've been working on some studio paintings and big projects. And, uh, you know, I looked at my my art, uh, my easel, and I was thinking about what I was trying to accomplish. And I cleaned some brushes and I cleaned a palette. I, I, I cleaned up the studio. And uh, I was thinking about some illustrations that I'm working on. And, um, you know, I ran out of time. So I was going to do it after work. Then after work, I was really sitting down and like thinking about what I wanted to accomplish. And um, I didn't know where to start. So I got online. I did some stuff. Pretty soon it, it was midnight. And uh, I was exhausted, and I went to bed. And um, I got up the next day, and I was thinking about what I was going to do art for that day. And I realized that, to my shock and horror, I actually forgot to do art on January 5th. <laughs> and um, it's horrible. Uh, I, I only made it five days without ruining my <laughs> my art resolution. Um, but it's okay, because uh, I am going to learn from that, and I'm going to start over. And so I'm going from January 6th to January 6th. Um, so I'm still going to do a year. You know, there's no rule that says that it has to be um, January 1 to January 1. You know what I'm saying? And um, But what would have helped me is doing that earlier in the day when I was thinking about it, when I had momentum on what I was trying to do and accomplish, rather than putting it off, putting it off, and then it just gets easier and easier to forget and, uh, and that's what happened to me. So one thing I think that can also help is if you try to focus on making it easy to do. In fact, that's another thing that um, I'm trying to do right now. Uh, I don't want to forget again. I don't want to, you know, not uh, follow through on my goals. And so I have created for myself a way that I can make art easily, and that's by carrying a sketchbook around with me um, pretty much wherever I go. Now, that doesn't mean that I'm not going to do plein air. I mean, I did plein air yesterday, and it was not easy. It was freezing uh, temperatures. It was very cold, uh, slightly unpleasant. It was a little bit difficult, but um, I got it done, and I really enjoyed it. It was really fun. Um, but I want something that will help me uh, on days where it isn't easy, um, where I need something easy and quick. Uh, and that's where a sketchbook like this can come in handy. And even if, like, say, painting's your main thing, um, doing drawing and working on your drawing skills can help you. And you can just do something really quick. You could keep watercolor in your bag, um, however you want to think about it. But thinking about what it is that you want to do, um, which for me is doing art, and you think, okay, I want to make, how do I make art? What's the easiest to do version of that? What's the easiest to execute version? And then, you know, you can work on the hard uh, versions as well, right? If you want to do plein air, uh, if you want to work on a big studio piece, what it, whatever it is that you're trying to work on, but have an easy to accomplish, uh, quick to accomplish version of your goals, and uh, and that will help you immensely, um, because you want to really keep momentum, and you want to try to uh, keep keep yourself in the game, so to speak. Um, you want to build in a mentality, whatever your goals are. And you want to frame it in such a way that you focus more on frequency rather than uh, volume. So it would be probably better to say, I'm going to try to paint 
or make art every day um, or, or three times a week or every month or however you want to think about that than to say, I'm going to paint every day for two hours. Now, painting every day for two hours would be amazing. And trust me, I want to do that <laughs> so badly. But it's also very often quite difficult because, again, life gets in the way. Your car breaks down. You need to go get an oil change. There's a special event. There's a concert you're going to that day. You're traveling. You have the flu. There's so many things that uh, alter our, our schedule, right? And you need um, a way to deal with that other than to just say, well, I'm not doing it and uh, my streak is ruined and my habit is ruined and uh, my goal is ruined, right? We don't want to get to that place. What we want is to have, you know, basically a variety of things that you can do that will allow you to keep your goals alive and to keep um, trying to accomplish what you're accomplishing um, without having to give it up or be fatalistic or or all or nothing type mentality. So um, if you can frame what you do, like for me, it's not plein air paint every day or urban sketch every day, but it is make art every day. Then that allows me on days when I do have two, three hours to spend uh, on a painting and to drive out into the countryside and to do you know what I really want, I, I can do that. But on days that I don't have that, I'm still able to meet my goal because my goal is kind of based around the concept of I need to make art on a frequency basis rather than I have to make art for two hours every day or, or what have you. So as you're doing this throughout your year, one of the things that you also want to think about is building in some sort of pausing points or inflection points um, for you to reevaluate your goals and to reevaluate how things are going. Because, um, you know, maybe you're going to look at how things are going after a, a month, two months, three months, and you're going to say, um, this is really great. This is really easy. I'm really enjoying it. Uh, I think I can do more. And you could actually intensify your goal and um, not just, um, you know, say you're going to do what you've been doing, but to actually uh, escalate things, take things to a higher level, uh, add more complexity, or just frankly change your goals. But at the same time, uh, if you start pursuing a goal and it's not working for you, it's working against you, you find that, you know, it's not giving you the results that you thought you were going to get or you're not enjoying it the way that you thought you would, you can actually de-escalate your goal. You can uh, shift your goal. And so even though we're th we often think in the mindset of, this is my goal for 2024, this is my goal for the next year, you can actually kind of break that up into smaller chunks, uh, which you should do anyways, to see how do I get to that goal, right? If you want to be a professional artist, and you think, what are all the things that constitutes a professional artist? And what are all the things that I need to do to get there. And you should be thinking in terms of, you know, at least quarterly uh, or whatever inflection point throughout the year makes sense to you that you want to stop and pause and think, is this working or not? And do I need to change anything or not? So I was very kind of discouraged that uh, I messed up my, uh, my art goals and um, I wanted to, I was very frustrated. I didn't know what to do, to be honest with you. Um, basically, what I decided is I'm going to restart, even though I, I messed up and I missed a day. And I'm going to effectively act as though uh, nothing happened. And um, so if uh, that happens to you, if you mess up, if you forget a day or you you lose your habit for whatever reason, um, keep going. Don't uh, don't fully give up. Uh, just restart, and um, you know it will be better for you to, um, in the long run, be able to keep working on something like that than it will be to uh, just totally give up. 
So that's that's kind of my advice with that is if if there's like a big drop off and uh, you know you don't get get everything accomplished the way that you wish you had, um, it's okay, you know, and don't don't give up and just restart. And there's no there's no rule that says that you know you have to um, you have to do everything in uh, from January one to January one. You know you could do a yearly goal starting from any date. And so um, I think just having that mindset in mind that uh, you can restart is a good thing. Along with you know focusing on frequency over volume, I think another thing that's really helpful is to Focus on the process of accomplishing your goal, or making the goal itself a process rather than a result. So, you know, if you think about what would it look like to be a professional plein air artist, you might say, well, what does a professional plein air artist do? Well, they go out and they they paint plein air uh, landscapes, um, Every day, and they and they sell them, right? So the everyday part is kind of a volume thing. So you might toss that out. We could say, how do you make? What's the easiest version of that for you? Is that well, you could go outside and you could make plein air paintings, and you could try to sell them, right? And that is a, a process-oriented goal, and the product of say fame or money, uh, or actually becoming a professional. Um, is not your main focus. You're focused on the process uh, that would lead to that result, but you're not so hyper focused on making, you know, having to get that result. And um, one of the things is I find even just with with painting is like if I focus on the actual process of making a good painting, a lot of times I get a good painting. But uh, if I focus on trying to get a good product and all my attention and energy is focused on uh, just having to have a good painting and I'm worried and I'm trying to get a good painting. A lot of times that's a recipe for, for stress and a lot of times those paintings don't turn out as well. So that would be my advice is to really think about um, setting your goals in the context of trying to not allow yourself to get too wrapped up on the process, the product of okay, I have to, I have to have this outcome, but rather focusing on focusing on the process of uh, how you want to approach this this issue, how you want to approach this goal, and uh, and what are you going to do about it. Focus on what you do, uh, not so much on what happens to you, and uh, a lot of times you you get a good result in the end anyway. So the last step I would say as an artist for creating good art goals is that in some way you need to share an aspect of your art and your art journey with other people. Partly that's due to um, trying to have some form of accountability. You know, if you know that at some point you're going to be showing your artwork to people, um, you got to make some artwork and that will help keep you honest. But I think even more important than that is ultimately art is not just for ourselves, but art is about people. And um, whether, you know, you just show it to your friends or your family or you put it on social media, um, you know, for me, the YouTube channel is a great um, aspect of sharing my artwork, um, and it is a form of accountability in that, you know, I I really would struggle to fully give up artwork because of you guys on here and uh, the, the great community that's on here and wanting to feel like I want to um, provide a benefit for you guys, and um, I really don't want to let you guys down. And uh, I really have a lot of friends here on YouTube. I, I enjoy uh, the community that we have. And I enjoy being a part of it. And I think that um, if you uh, create a version of that for yourself, and it doesn't have to be on YouTube, but it can be, um, it could be, like I said, something uh, modest, like just sharing your artwork with your friends or your family or putting it out there in some way. One of the things is you also may inspire somebody else 
to to pick up this uh, artwork for themselves. Um, that's actually how I got into art. Is uh, my friend Sydney, who uh, worked uh, at the same place that I worked at, was an artist, and she uh, posted some little travel sketches that she had done on a trip. And I thought that it was so cool that it really inspired me to try to learn how to draw for the first time in my life as uh, an adult man. And I went to the art store not knowing anything and I bought some pencils and I bought a sketchbook and I started Googling sketches and just copying sketches off the internet. Um, and then really talking to any friend that I had about how do you learn to draw? How do you learn? How do you do this? And they would give me some advice. Well, maybe you should try this. Maybe have you read this book? Have you done this thing? Or have you done that thing? And then I discovered YouTube and off it went. And now it's such a huge uh, part of my life. Um, but it wouldn't have happened had my friend not posted her her sketches and just said, no, I don't want to post them, you know. And um, it wasn't, it wasn't, they weren't, um, you know, no, no, this is not meant to, to be a critique, but these, these were just quick and dirty, uh, simple sketches that captured a memory for her. But even that was impressive to me. And, um, you know, I've seen some of her like full studio work, which is also incredible. Uh, but this wasn't full studio work. This was just capturing, um, quick little moments, I think in pencil, um, as she traveled on a, on a family vacation and, uh, and it did, and it inspired me and it changed my life. And you might do that for somebody else too, no matter what your skill level is. And so be willing to share your artwork with other people. Use these principles as you work this year on your art goals. And remember that you have a voice that matters. So go be creative. I'll see you next time.